doesn't take long when you dive into the world of hydroponics before you realize there's a bit of acronym abuse happening here. There's acronyms for everything and then once you start to try and figure out what that one means, there's acronyms for the description of that. It's like acronym inception. It can be really, really confusing sometimes. So I wanted to make this video to bust out 18 of the most popular hydroponic acronyms and explain what they mean in more layman's detail, easy for anybody to understand. So I broke this video down into sections. So I have the acronyms for nutrients, I have the acronyms for lighting, and then finally I have acronyms for hydroponic gardens. Also, I linked up some of my favorite free guides in the description box below. So if you wanna dive more into hydroponics, uh, make sure you download those. They're a great resource for you moving forward. So let's get into it. First one I wanna talk about is pH. Now everyone knows about your pH. You have your acidic to your alkaline, zero to 14 on the scale, but what does pH actually stand for? Well, it stands for the potential for hydrogen. So the next one I wanna talk about is TDS. You're gonna see this when you're looking to measure your nutrients. It stands for total dissolved solids. Uh, it's gonna measure the amount of particulates in the water and the way that it measures those and the uh, unit of measurement that it uses is PPM. That's the next one. PPM stands for parts per million. So TDS and PPM work together. The total dissolved solids and the parts per million work together to give you the number that you're gonna find on your tool. So the other acronym that you're gonna find when measuring nutrients is EC. This stands for the electrical conductivity. And this is gonna measure the, um, the ionic charge of the water and how electrons move through it. This is gonna give you a better, more rounded measurement of your water's integrity. It's not just gonna tell you about the particulates, it takes a lot more things into consideration. So EC, electrical conductivity, and when you're looking to measure your electrical conductivity, you'll likely see this. This stands for millisiemens per centimeter. Now, Millisiemens or Siemens are the way that we measure the electrical conductivity of a solution. So millisiemens are one thousandth of one semen, and whenever you look at your meter, you're likely gonna see it in millisiemens. The next acronym I wanna to talk to you guys about is actually a chemical compound, and it is H2O2. As we know with chemical compounds, the letter is gonna be the element, uh, so hydrogen would be this one, and two is gonna be the amount of that, so two parts hydrogen to two parts oxygen, and this is the chemical compound for hydrogen peroxide. So I use this one a lot with, without explanation and I apologize to anybody who's seen my videos and might be wondering what I was talking about when I said add H2O2 and I didn't then reiterate that that's hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I use hydrogen peroxide a lot in my gardens. It's probably one of my most main used tools and I do throw around H2O2 quite often. Next one I wanna to talk to you guys about in regards to nutrients is GH. Now I notice this one a lot more on social media. GH stands for General Hydroponics. General Hydroponics is the largest supplier of hydroponics nutrients in the world. The General Hydroponics Flora Series is kind of universally used. So on social media, a lot of times you'll see people say something like GH Bloom, and what they're talking about is the General Hydroponics Bloom formula. All right, so now let's get into some lighting acronyms, and here's where things get really crazy. The first one right off the bat, PPFD. This one stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density. Now, I know that's a mouthful and it's kind of crazy, but it's actually extremely important. The PPFD map that you'll see with your full spectrum grow lights, that's gonna tell you the amount of energy, the amount of photon density as measured from the plant. So you can see here on these maps, there are, actual, there are heights and distances. Now, the measurement tool they used to take the PPFD measurement uh, was measured from that far away from the light source. So what you're seeing on the map there is, uh, I guess to break it down really simply, the power of light. And the way you measure light energy is with U-moles. So a mole is a particular way that you can measure energy a uh, U-mole is one millionth of one mole, and that's how we measure light energy. So this next one's really important. It is the PAR, or the photosynthetically active radiation. You'll see down here at the bottom of this uh, spectrum analysis graph, right there, it says photosynthetically active radiation. What that means is what they're showing you on this graph are just the uh, wavelengths that are photosynthetically active, that the plant uses, so to speak. So 
they're not going to focus on any wavelengths that the plant doesn't use. They're just gonna show us and focus on the, the photosynthetically active radiation or the, or the wavelengths that the plant uses for photosynthesis. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about UV. So UV stands for ultraviolet, right? And ultraviolet is a shade of light that's, that's past blue, uh, where it gets a little bit more into electromagnetic radiation than it does into visible light. Now UV or UVA is on the safer side of UV light. That one's really right next to blue. UVA is like black light. And this is totally safe for plants and I, I highly recommend using UVA light on your plants at all stages of growth. This is gonna increase the production of your terpenes and your trichomes, which are gonna make your plants smell better, taste better, and more resilient. Uh, UVA light is great and it's completely harmless. And if you have some black light posters, it makes everything really funky and psychedelic. UVB, now that's where things get a little more intense. I would never recommend using UVB on your plants. It can burn them. In fact, UVB and UVC uh, are, are the primary wavelengths that are responsible for just like general sunburns. On the other end of the spectrum, you also have IR or infrared. This is invisible light that is known to uh, help plants with the flowering stage to, to, to produce bigger fruit. Let's get back to our acronyms. All right, so now let's talk about hydroponic garden acronyms. Okay, so the first one is DWC. This stands for deep water culture. This type of garden is gonna see your plant sitting in water with the roots suspended in the water, and then there's gonna be an air stone at the bottom that's delivering fresh air with an air pump into the garden. These are one of the most popular types of hydroponic gardens, and uh, I have several DWC gardens going right now. Next is LPA. This stands for Low Pressure Aeroponic Garden. Uh, this type of garden, you're gonna build up low pressure within the pipes. Uh, these are the most common DIY aeroponic gardens. And once you've built a little bit of pressure up into the pipes, then it's just gonna spray onto your plants. Next is High Pressure Aeroponics, HPA. This is similar to Low Pressure Aeroponics, except a much more complex build because we're talking about like 75 to 100 PSI building up inside these pipes. HPA stands for High Pressure Aeroponics. Okay, well that's the end of my list. I just looked over on my screen and that's all my acronyms for this video. I do wanna do more videos just getting into uh, understanding all the vernacular, the acronyms and the abbreviations within hydroponics and aeroponics because I know it can be a lot to try to process. I hope this is helpful to you guys. Uh, don't forget to download those guides. They're totally free and they are also a really, really great resource for anybody who's diving into hydroponics. See you guys in the next video. See you in the comments and let's grow together.